Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, moving on, our, of course, a follow-up to the developments from the first City Monument Bank and the scandal that has rocked the bank in the last few weeks. Yesterday, it was announced that Yemisi Adu has been, of course, announced as a replacement, a temporary replacement, uh, for the former MD, Adam Nuru. Uh, this, of course, is you know a, a continuing conversation as investigations are being carried out with regards uh, the ethical uh, misconduct, if you know it can be described as that, that has led to the conversations we're having this morning. We've invited uh, to join us uh, Mr. Bolanle Lugbani, a legal practitioner, to join us and um, you know share his thoughts on the development so far. Thank you so much. Good morning to you, Good sir. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, so, you know, I will start by saying, um, I guess it's, it's a good thing to give kudos to the bank for the steps that they have taken so far uh, to ensure that an investigation is carried out and, you know, justice is served, you know, if, if, if necessary. Do, do you agree with that? Well, I agree, but uh, I think the response was not prompt enough. The damage to the image and reputation of the bank uh, had already um, been done. Um, how much further it could have gone would have, you know, b would be an issue, you know, of, uh, of uh, subjective um, analysis. But at the point where the bank stepped in, it appeared that um, the impression had already been cast that the MD was guilty of some form of unethical behavior or malfeasance, and then that was also rubbing off on the image of the bank. The bank has been the butt of jokes on social media, text messages, and even amongst Nigerians. And most of the things said have been hilarious. But goes to reduce the stock of the bank in the eyes of the public and indeed its customers. Mm. And uh, looking at the key issue here of office romance, if they've not broken any law, so to speak, tell us about the ethical implications of this. Well, um, Human nature is such that when a man and a woman work in a closed environment, the woman being an attractive woman, the man being handsome, the possibility is that there will be attraction. So corporate organizations, ministries, departments, and agencies always set the rules. Even the Nigeria police, the Nigeria army set the rules. Paramilitary organizations set the rules so as to prevent a situation where the domestic private life of the employee or the staff is brought into the official working space. You cannot have had a quarrel with your wife, your spouse, or a girlfriend who you are working with about how the egg was fried this morning and the response she gave you will ultimately be taken to the office and that conversation will continue to the consternation of other colleagues. So, of course, there are also issues that are ethical. Is it moral? What impression does it give if a boss and the secretary are dating each other? The, to the other colleagues and other staffers, would the person have an undue advantage or privileges with regards to promotion, allowances, salaries, extra code, trips, seminars, trainings? Those are the issues which organizations, ministries, departments, and agencies try to set ethical standards for. If you are going to be dating somebody in your establishment, that is agency, ministry, department, bank, or whatever, you should know that the two of you at a point, if you decide to marry, may not be allowed to retain your positions in the organization. You may date. You may do it secretly. It's your private affair. Don't bring it to work. But once it gets to the point where you have decided to marry each other, one of those individuals must leave the organization so that there will not be a conflict of interest when they are working together. But this, this is not a general law that covers every uh, organization. It is, there is you know, some possibility that you know, the bank we're speaking about this morning may not have that level of strictness with regards to ethical... Oh, I'm quite sure that they do. Most uh, private organizations, banking institutions, have ethical codes, ethical standards, which all staffers must append their signature to, they must sign on to. And this type of situation that we find ourselves with this particular situation uh, is one of those things that they had already thought ahead about to prevent such a situation. Okay. Unfortunately, the advent of social media 
and the tragic circumstances you know connected to this you know made the story viral and right. uh, erupt of negative we're of course still waiting for the bank's investigation outcome, it's yes. still yet to you know be uh, confirmed that there that truly is, was yes. Um, an office relationship that led to you know what we're talking about today, but uh, some other you know aspect, and this is maybe the one that created the biggest conversation is a paternity fraud, um, according to you know what the story says and when it eventually broke. So quickly share with us what what laws um, do we have in Nigeria concerning paternity fraud? The current case law, the most you know uh, definitive position of the law with regards to paternity in Nigeria is the case of Anuzi versus uh, Nana, where a party in the case, this is a court of appeal matter, you know, raised a dispute or a question as to the paternity of a 57-year-old. The person alleging said that he had had a liaison or affair with the mother of a 57-year-old and that that 57-year-old was actually his son. The position of the law from that judgment is that if the person is a minor, and, the dis and there's a dispute as to the paternity of the child, yes. the court can compel DNA examination to say who or who is not the father of the child. But if it involves an adult, except the adult vol voluntarily submits himself or consents to a DNA being done to ascertain who of the rival claimants to his paternity, whether it is vexatious, it is embarrassing, uh, the, the, the accusation or allegation is, uh, is, is so mischievous, he, except he consents, the constitution protects him and the court cannot compel that he submit himself to a DNA examination to uh, ascertain his paternity because he's protected by the right to dignity of human life, the right to dignity of private and family life under Chapter 4 of the 1999 Constitution, which is the supreme law of this country. Mm. So that is the position of case law. But while I, as a legal practitioner, I understand the principle or doctrine of stare decisis, judicial precedent, which simply means that when the Supreme Court or a higher court makes a decision, a court of inferior jurisdiction cannot make a decision that is different from the, the decision of the Supreme Court. While I understand that, I, on a moral and ethical basis, I'm of the humble view that if there is no smoke, there can be no fire. If a woman, and this is part of the decision of the Court of Appeal in this particular matter, there is a presumption that a woman who gives birth in a marriage to a child, there is a presumption that the paternity is that of the father in that marriage. But if a rival dispute arises from somebody, a third party outside, and says that child which, that you have been taking care of for the past 20, 25, or 50 years is actually my child, I think on a moral, ethical, and, uh, and, and uh, honest basis, our court should shift from the current position. Because it sets a social um, uh, uh, argument or social discussion as to what our, our parents actually get up to. If at the point of marriage you, were date, you had a fiancé and it's possible that you had not left somebody who you were dating in addition to the person you eventually married and 50, 20, 40 years after somebody looks and says, I think that child is my child. The truth about the paternity of that child should be compelled by court because it means that the stigma that surrounds that elderly person, no matter his age, will be put to rest. He knows actually who sired him, who planted the seed that gave birth to him. It curbs socially and morally the excesses of our parents from having more than one partner or lover and extending that relationship till the 11th hour before marriage. Mm. And also, if we can find a way to find out such issues when it comes to adults, the father who nurtured that child may be heartbroken from birth to say 30, 40, or 50 years, but at least he will be certain that psychologically he's still the father of the child, but he can in fact claim damages against the woman 
okay. who, 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 who carried out that fraud, yeah. paternity fraud against him, and the third party. And that's yes. what I was just going to yes. ask. And, and he can sue them for damages. Okay. For all of the money he expended yes. in training that child. And so it will serve as a lesson to everybody that if you are doing, pardon my vernacular, any kurukere, magu, magu. make it clean. <laughs> Don't do it in the last minute. And if you do it in the last minute, you are man enough or woman enough to do it, you should be able to pay the consequences. So, if, so, so, if do we, so, so, so we have, so there's a possibility of, you know, um, a father or a man uh, suing the wife and whoever else. For yes, if, if, if the laws are amended. If the, if the laws are amended or the case law changes. But well, we currently of, don't have any law. We don't have any law that compels an adult, uh, that, uh, that allows a court to compel an adult to submit himself to DNA. No, he no, can only no. do it voluntarily. Yeah, what I'm asking is, you know, so if, 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 if a father finds out, a man finds out that these kids are not his, do we have any, you know, legal, you know, um, uh, platforms where oh, yes. know, he can sue the wife or sue? Oh, yes, oh, oh, yes. If, for instance, he's of the view that this child, mannerisms, traits, character, looks are not mine. Yeah. And he decides, one way or the other, to obtain samples yes. and goes to submit his own sample to, to compare whether he's the father of the child and can get a bona fide result. It is the basis and the ground to institute uh, you know, matrimonial divorce, you know, whether customary or, or under, the, under the act. He can, on the basis of the fact that he has been deceived, he has been defrauded, even promise of marriage is actionable. You went out True. with somebody for three years, contributed financially, emotionally, psychologically, the person decides that last minute is not marrying you. That is actionable, talk less of a situation where somebody says, this is your child, you did a DNA secretly and you discover it's not your child. You can divorce and sue the woman for mm. damages. Mr. Olupani, bringing it back to this issue now, it seems this might just be one of those cases that will remain a mystery because the woman right now is not in the country, her husband is late, and uh, the controversy regarding uh, Adam Nuhu, now he's been, he's, he's, he has proceeded on leave, EMC Edwin has been appointed as the acting MD. But why do you think, you, you did mention earlier that banks do have ethics about this, that staffs have to sign, you know. So if the bank had such a system in place, why did they not begin proceedings, you know, including him proceeding on leave immediately? Why did they have to wait until public pressure mounted and there was a scandal, a full blue scandal already on social media before, you know, they asked him to proceed on leave? Is it because he was a management staff? Or why would you think that? No, no that, I think, that I, think he, I, I think to a certain extent the situation was after the birth of the children. This allegation after the birth of the so-called children of uh, of the of the uh, of the MD is alleged to have done. So after the birth, I think that the situation was well managed up until a point where. Maybe the woman could not live with herself anymore, according to the allegations, and had to relocate and tell the husband, who is now deceased, that these children are actually not your own. All of this is still allegations, of course. So at that point, it went to the realm. It, it must have been the butt of jokes within the organization. It must have been the butt of rumors within the organization. But because no particular uh, uh, specific public reference was made to the uh, suspended managing director, the bank may have thought that, well, if it's in the realm of jokes, it's a private affair, it's a uh, you know, man, no woman, the lady, of course, has resigned, has moved on elsewhere, and so that matter appears to have taken care of itself. But, of course, what triggered the present scenario that we are facing now is the death of the husband and the connection, the link, between his death and actually what caused the heartbreak and led to his death, that he was heartbroken, he discovered, he was informed, allegedly by his wife, and he was devastated, he had a stroke, this happened, that, all those allegations, which of course now began to impact on the image of the bank, affected the tenure of the uh, suspended managing director, is what probably made the bank you know, take action because now it was adversely affecting the image of the bank and giving an impression to the customers of the bank that the bank was not being managed or administered responsibly. I'm, I'm expecting yes. that there would be a thorough investigation. Yes. We would find out if the story is actually true or it is, you know, just, you know, yes. um, you know a big headline to... Uh, 
kick you know somebody out of his position you know there's rumors about it being boardroom politics so politics. you could quickly share you know your thoughts on, on that one and then second who then can sue on behalf of the you know the man who's now late uh, you know is there's the possibility of his family taking um, legal <laughs> steps against either the bank the you know md the wife anybody uh, to you know as we if, move forward if, if if there are two scenarios that can play out to totally wash himself clean of this allegation, the suspended MD may submit himself to a DNA test. It is his right to say, I submit or I do not submit. So if he goes ahead to submit and it is proven that he is not the father of the children by taking a sample from the brother or sister or family member of the deceased alleged uh, person who was defraud, defrauded paternally, so uh, that will prove that he is the father or not the father. Well, the person who is a beneficiary of the estate of the deceased uh, person can represent his interest and sue um, for the wrongful death if they can link yep. that, uh, that situation to the, what led to the stroke and the eventual this and this. And that would be very difficult mm. anyway. A very and, I, tough and I doubt, situation. and I doubt whether in the circumstances, you know, the MD except is hundred percent sure that will submit himself to a DNA <laughs> uh, mm. examination. Should, yeah, yeah. thank you very yes. much, yes. Uh, Mr. Bonale yes. Odubani, legal practitioner, for you know sharing the more shedding more light on this issue, very controversial one. Uh, we are yet to see the end of the matter. And uh, obviously, um, I now have you know, someone that I can speak with in case I need to sue people who <laughs> lied to me that we were going to get married you know, and, you know, jumped off halfway. Sadly, in this, in this part of the world, I think it's the man who makes the proposals. So. But things are changing anyway. Things are changing, you know. You know. Maybe you can sue the lady if she proposed to marry you and she's, you know, a multimillionaire and stuff like that. Maybe anyway, thank you very time. much again. <laughs> we'll be you. going on a very short break now. And when we return, we'll be taking a very quick look at the U.S. Capitol Hill invasion. Do stay with us.